the Word of Faith Netcast is on the air. Well, praise God. This is Dr. Bill Bailey, and this is the Word of Faith Netcast. I'm glad you could join us this week. We're going to be getting into the Word of God in just a few minutes, but first of all, I want to make a few announcements. The main thing that I want to remind you of is I like to do is Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org. You have a tremendous resource available to you through Word of Faith Radio. The great thing about it is 365 days a year, 7 days a week, 24 hours a day, Word of Faith Radio is there for you to hear, hear, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God, hear the Word of God on a regular, consistent basis. Now this year, I don't know if you know this, but this year is actually a leap year. So we got 366 days <laughs> that you can hear Word of Faith Radio in the year 2012. Amen? So, we're blessed with an extra day of good programming from Word of Faith Radio. So I'd encourage you to go check it out. I'll put the URL right here, wofr.org, Word of Faith Radio. And the other thing you can do is tell your friends about Word of Faith Radio. Share them, uh, send them an email. Share with them about the ministry of Word of Faith Radio because it will be a blessing to them, to their family, if you know somebody that's dealing with sickness and disease, for instance, have them listen to Word of Faith Radio to build their faith. Amen? Now, let's get into the Word of God. We're going to be talking about that very thing, developing your faith. And first, we have to understand what faith is. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. I want to kind of set the stage for this because we're going to actually look at Hebrews chapter 11. But you know, chapter 10 comes before chapter 11. <laughs> You say, Dr. Bill, that's a great revelation. Yes, it is. <laughs> let's look at Hebrews chapter 10, and uh, let's look at verse 38. Now the just shall live by what? By faith. The just shall live by faith. But, this is God speaking here, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. God is not pleased when you draw back from operating by faith. You need to use and apply your faith. Now, you say, but Dr. Bill, I don't have any faith. Oh, if you're a believer, you got faith. Amen. When you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you believe God raised him from the dead and called him and recognized him as your Lord, you used faith to get born again. So you have faith. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 that he's given to every man among us, meaning believers, the, T-H-E, the measure of faith. Not a measure. See, some people read that and they substitute the word a for the word the, T-H-E. They substitute that and they say, well, I got a measure. And my little measure is not as big as your measure. Matter of fact, I'm just going to go over there. And, uh, and let's read that. I hadn't planned to do this. You know, it's, it's sometimes when you get off on some of these rabbit trails, so to speak, you actually <clears throat> get into some things that people need to hear. And so I just want to go with that. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's look at Romans chapter 12, beginning in verse 1. I beseech you. Now remember I've told you before the word beseech means to beg. I, I implore, I beg you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that's what we want to do is renew our mind to the Word, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you. Now who's he talking to? He's talking to the church at Rome, and being the church at Rome, they're Christians. So every man among you is Christians. You get that? You see that? <clears throat> now that's going to become important because you need to see why it's every man among you. And I'll show you that here in just a minute. 
every man among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man, who? Every man among you, the, T-H-E, the measure of faith. The measure is the same measure. See, God is no respecter of persons. He didn't give Brother Copeland this whole huge big load of faith and gave me this little itty bitty amount of faith. No. Every believer gets the same measure. See, that's God is no respecter of persons. You see that? If he were a respecter of persons, he would give some people one amount, and another person another amount, and another person on the other side of the world another amount, and that would mean he'd have preference toward one and not the other. You see what I'm saying? <clears throat> God starts us all off with the same measure of faith. You say, Dr. Bill, why is that important? Well, you're going to find out here in just a minute. It's important because what you do with your faith is the key. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, let me give you an example just out of the natural. Every child that is born into this physical earth has the same number of muscles. I'm talking about, you know, they're born a healthy child. They have the same number of muscles. One doesn't get a different amount, the other one doesn't get another amount. But over the years, as they grow, and as they exercise physically, and as they eat the right foods, their muscles develop. Now you've seen these big old muscle-bound guys, you know, they have developed their muscles to a, in some cases, extreme amount to where they're big, bulging muscles. But do they have the same number of muscles that you do? Well, yeah, they're human. They, they have the same arm muscles, you know, the tricep and the forcep and all the different muscles that are in the arm. Same muscles, but they're developed further. Do you see that? Now, in the same way, if that child, same number of muscles, didn't eat the right foods, uh, maybe they're in some country where, you know, they don't, they don't get three square meals a day. Their nutrition is not what it should be. And you've seen these pictures on TV, I'm sure, big, poofed out stomachs, you know, from malnutrition and the flies around their eyes, you know. I, I tell you, <laughs> I don't like those commercials. And I'll just give you a little aside here as to why I don't like them. It's not that they're not reporting accurately what may be that going on in that particular country, but those people are using those images to pull on your heartstrings to get you to give, and very often the money that you give doesn't go into the, you know, the good works they, they claim to be doing. I would much rather be given into the gospel, and there's a lot of people who have Christian ministries that feed those kids that not only feed them good nutritional food, they also feed them the Word of God. Rather than these charities that go on and show you all these pictures of kids with, you know, big stomachs and flies around their eyes and looking up at you like, oh, woe is me, you know. But you, you've probably seen those pictures. Those children aren't getting proper nutrition. They're not getting proper exercise. And what do you see? Their muscles practically are non-existent. Some of them you can just see skin and bones. What's the difference? Nutrition, what they eat, what they take in, and development, what they expend, or how they exercise their muscles. Now, the parallel to that in the Christian spiritual world here is what you take into your mouth is the Word of God. You see, you hear the Word, you receive the Word, you feed on the Word. How many times is the Word called uh, the meat? or the milk, or is used in terms of food. See, we take it in, and that's our nutrition. Then we speak it out, and that's how we exercise it. That's how we develop it. Do you see that? Now, the reason I say, you know, I said I'd come back to this. The reason I say to every man among you is because Jesus, remember, told the scribes and the Pharisees, ye are of your father, the devil. There are people here on this earth that have not received Jesus Christ as Lord, and they don't have faith. Matter of fact, the Bible says very plainly, not all men have faith. 
You say, well, Dr. Bill, that's not fair. If they don't have faith, how are they going to get born again? Ah, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? See Romans chapter 10. We can go back just a few uh, chapters here in the book of Romans. We're already in Romans. Boy, I hadn't planned to get into all this, but this is good stuff. Praise the Lord. You need to see it. <clears throat> Romans chapter 10. And let's begin in verse 8. It says here, but in this, you should be very familiar with this scripture. This is Word of Faith Ministries. <laughs> so you should be familiar with this scripture. This is, this is kind of the core scripture here. Uh, but what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth. We got to eat it. <laughs> Amen. We got to get it in our mouth. Okay. <laughs> you say, I'm not sure that's what it means, Dr. Bill. I'm using it as a, an example, praise the Lord. I'm, I know it means put the word in your mouth so you can speak it. But you see what I'm saying. You got to get it in you before it comes out of you, all right? <laughs> uh, the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is what? The word of faith which we preach. Now, Paul said that he and the folks with him on his ministry team preached the word of faith. Amen. So I'm in good company being a word of faith preacher. Amen. <laughs> All right. Verse 9. That, here's what the word of faith is, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. This word saved is the Greek word sozo. It means saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, delivered from all temporal evil. It's a mouthful, isn't it? Praise the Lord. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all those that call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, delivered from temporal evil. It's that word sozo. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? You see this? These are folks out in the world. They haven't heard the gospel. But a minister comes and preaches to them the gospel. And what do they do? They hear it. Amen? Keep reading here. Uh, how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent, as it is written, How beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things, but they've not all obeyed the gospel. See, they, a lot of folks may have heard it, but they didn't all obey it. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? Now here's verse 17, in context. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When a minister preaches the word of God, then faith comes. Now, let me say this. Just because the minister preaches the word of God and they hear it and faith comes, faith is not always necessarily received. Do, do you get that? You have to have an open heart and an open spirit to receive the word of God See, that's why it's near you, even in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach, that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, in other words, you act on it. Remember I said speaking was acting on it? You act on it, you confess Jesus as Lord, you believe God raised him from the dead, and you shall be. No ifs, ands, and buts about it. You shall be. That's the most emphatic way to say it that there is in the language. You shall be saved, delivered, healed, protected, made whole, spirit, soul, body, financially, socially, and delivered from all temporal evil. It will occur <laughs> if you do it, if you believe it, and if you act on it. Now, I'm checking the time because I want to be sure we got enough time to get into what I want to talk about here. This is important, and I don't want to diminish what it is we're talking about here. The Word of God is the means by which faith comes. It comes by hearing, and as I've said before, it doesn't come by having heard. It's a continual, ongoing basis of hearing and hearing and hearing. 
Faith comes by the continual hearing of the Word. That's why when I mentioned earlier about Word of Faith Radio, it's so important that you listen to the Word of God taught on a, in a consistent manner every single day. You've got to hear the Word, and it develops faith. Now, let's go back to our example of the person with their muscles. They're building their muscles. You develop your muscles by using them, by exercising them. You develop your faith by speaking the Word of God, by keeping the Word of God in your mouth, by speaking it out, and by acting on it. See, faith without works is dead. I like what I heard, uh, I think it was Smith Wigglesworth. He would get up on uh, the stage, you know, the platform in front of the congregation, and he would just go from one end of the, of the platform to the other and say, faith is an act. Faith is an act. Faith is an act. He just kept saying that. And people finally would get a hold of it and realize faith is not some concept. Faith is action, putting into action what you believe. In the case of Romans 10, 9, it's confessing Jesus as Lord and believing that God has raised him from the dead and then thou shalt be saved. Well, the same process is true. You hear the word of God, faith comes. You speak it out of your mouth. Now, let's say it's healing. You hear the word of God concerning healing. You speak the word of God about healing out of your mouth. You see what I'm saying? Whatever you're believing, whatever area, context, you're believing in, you need to act on that area. If it's healing, listen to the scripture concerning healing and act on healing. Amen. Like Brother Hagin said, you know, you're laying there in the bed and you have heard the word of God concerning healing, get out of bed. But Dr. Bill, I can't get out of bed. Well, act. Get up. <laughs> Use your actions to demonstrate that you're operating by faith. Now, wow, we're, we, I feel like this is just a scatter shot. We're hitting it from every direction, but it's, it's good, praise the Lord. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38, once again. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, if any man draw back from faith, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. Soul is my will and emotion. So God is basically saying, I'm not going to take pleasure in people that fall back, fall away from faith. But we're not of them that draw back. This is the next verse, verse 39. But we're not of them that draw back unto perdition, but unto them that believe to the saving of the soul. And the word soul here in the Greek is the Greek word suke, which is breath, the spirit, Abstractly or concretely, the animal sentient principle only. In other words, not uh, the pneuma. The pneuma in the Greek is the vital spirit, the real you. You are a spirit. You have a suke. <laughs> okay? So the suke, the soul he's talking about here, is the mind, will, and emotions. If you believe, it will redeem, save, protect your soul. Now, that goes back to what we were talking about earlier from the scripture that talks about that we renew our mind, Romans 12, 1. We renew our mind to the word of God. Now let's finally get into the scripture that I was trying to get to before we got off on all this rabbit trail. But it was all, it was all good because it's all foundation that we needed to cover. Verse 1 of Hebrews chapter 11. It's the very next verse of what we just read. Now faith is... Let's, not even, let's just stop right there before we read the rest of the scripture. There's a lot of people that have looked at this and said, see the word now means now in the present tense, faith. So we're talking about faith always in the now. I agree with that. That is true. But that's not what this word now says. This word now is a, and let me just, let me just read it uh, from the Greek here. It's the Greek word de. That's the transliteration of the word. It is a primary particle, adversative or continuative. Don't you love big words? <laughs> continuative, that's the word I want to key in on here. But and etc. Also and but moreover now 
often unexpressed in English. It's not always expressed in English. But the continuative part is the part that I want to look at. Faith is a continuing thing. Faith is a process. Faith doesn't stop. It continues. You see what I'm saying? That's what it's talking about when it says now faith. On the other hand, when it says faith is, <laughs> the next two words, or the second word, the third word in this sentence, wow, we're, we're taking this apart every little bit, aren't we? Faith is. Faith is, is present tense. You see what I'm saying? Faith, it's not faith was, that would be past tense. It's not faith will be, that would be future tense. It's faith is. So I'm not taking anything away from the people who say faith's always in the now. That is true, okay? Don't misunderstand. What I'm saying is the word now here doesn't say that faith is always in the now. It's the phrase faith is that says faith is always in the now. The now is saying it's continuative. It's continuing. Faith is not always... Faith, okay, let me say it correctly. Faith is always present tense, but it's always present tense continuatively. <laughs> Dr. Bill, I don't understand that at all. Hold on, bear with me. Right, now pay attention. Right now is the present. Oh, wait a minute, now it's in the past. <laughs> Do you see that? <laughs> I'm going to do it again. Pay attention. Right now is in the present. Oh, now it's in the past. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? <clears throat> we are constantly flowing forward in time. Now is a concept that is constantly moving. Woo! Mm, that's deep. <laughs> if you'll think about this with me, <clears throat> you will get something out of it, all right? The now that is now is suddenly past. And now there's another now that is now that is now suddenly past. You see what I'm saying? We're traveling on a line in time. But the now that is now is, but it's continually moving. Now, what does that all mean? <laughs> what that means is you are constantly moving forward with your present tense. You're constantly moving forward down the timeline with what is the now. Which means you got to keep operating in faith continually now. Faith is now, faith is now, faith is now, as you move down that timeline. Are you getting it? Let's keep reading. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, some translations translate this this way. Faith is the giving of substance to things anticipated or, ex uh, or expected. It is the evidence that stands up in court of things you can't see or feel or experience with the natural senses. That's taking all the definitions and putting it all into the verse so that you can see all of it at once. Okay? Faith is the giving of substance to the things expected. Now, the word hope here is the Greek word elpis in the Greek. It means constant, favorable anticipation or expectation. You should always have a constant, favorable anticipation or expectation in your life. But that's just hope. Hope doesn't have the power within it to give itself substance. See, a lot of people if somebody's in the hospital and, and you go and you say, I'm going to go talk to them about the Word of God and about healing, then they'll, you know, the person may say to you know friend or family, whatever, may say, now don't, don't get their hopes up. No, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to get their hope up because hope is the goal setter that will paint the picture of their healing. But there's no power in the hope to give it substance. The power that gives its substance is faith. So you have to get their hope up, yes, 
But then you have to take that as the goal setter and develop their faith and, and give get them faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Get them the Word so that they can then get that hope translated into substance so that it comes to pass in the natural, physical world that they live in. You see that? All right. Faith is the substance or the giving of substance to things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. If I can't see it, you know, a lot of people say, I, if I don't see it, I won't believe it. I got to see it to believe it. Well, no. Once you see it, you don't have to believe it. It exists in front of you. <laughs> you don't have to believe it. It's there. No, you believe instead of seeing the believing takes the place of the seeing until you see it. That's a Selah moment right there. What you accept and receive by faith stands you in good stead until you actually see it. In other words, like Jerry Savelle said, and I've quoted it many times before, between the amen and the there it is. You pray the prayer of faith and you say amen, and then there's a manifestation at some point. But between the amen and the there it is, that's when you're operating in faith. Because you haven't seen it yet in the natural. But you have laid hold on it by faith, and your faith is standing you in good stead while you are waiting to experience the actual manifestation. Wow, we're out of time. I might stop right here and encourage you to write me here at Word of Faith Ministries. My address is Word of Faith Ministries, and the P.O. Box is P.O. Box 5213, High Point, North Carolina, the zip code 27262. And I'd also encourage you to go ahead and write me here an email. Email is just so much faster. It gets, gets to me, and you can get your question answered quickly. And that is Dr. Bill, D-R-B-I-L-L, -L, at W-O-F-M, Dot .org. Now our website is wofm.org and I'd encourage you to go to that website. Take advantage of everything we have there. We've got uh, audio messages, we've got video messages, we've got articles, we've got so much there. It's all a resource not only for you but for your family, for your friends, everybody. Tell them about that website because I believe it will be a tremendous benefit and resource to you. All right? So spread the word about Word of Faith Ministries, WFM.org, and Word of Faith Radio, WFR.org, because both of them are tremendous resources available to you. All right, praise God. We'll pick up with this again next week. Remember, until then, to fulfill the Word of God. The Word of Faith Netcast is brought to you by Word of Faith Ministries and our partners around the world.